Let's talk about the correlation coefficient. And the parameter rho, this is the Greek letter R, H, O, rho, is the population correlation coefficient, and it is a measure of the strength of the linear relationship between two random variables, x and y. And we're not going to know rho because it's a parameter. And we are going to estimate it with R, the Pearson correlation coefficient. Now, this formula here, it isn't exactly all that super intuitive, and we have different ways of expressing this. And one of them is uh, what we see up here. This Sx is the standard deviation of x. This Sy is the standard deviation of y. And you might notice these things. You might recognize them as the product of the z scores here. Uh, but if we look at another way of writing it, it is our sample slope times the ratio of the standard deviations here. So let's look at a plot first. Here we have x and y, an example we may have looked at before, and for a little perspective, in this example, my r, my correlation is 0 0.60 for this particular data. So we're going to get a number that is going to measure the strength of the linear relationship between our x and our y. And let's look at a few properties now. R is a unitless quantity. It has to lie between minus 1 and 1. It has the same sign as the sample slope. And if R equals 1 or minus 1, then all points fall perfectly on a line. Now, if the value of R is close to minus 1 or 1, then there is a strong linear relationship between X and Y. And if R is close to 0, then there's going to be a weak linear relationship between X and Y. Now one problem here, r is not all that easy to interpret. And so we're going to look at the square of r, which we happen to sometimes call the coefficient of determination. And that has a little bit of a nicer interpretation and a little bit easier to interpret. r squared, the square of the correlation coefficient, is the proportion of the total variation of y in the sample that can be attributed to the linear relationship with x. We can write this in different ways sometimes. Other expressions for r squared, maybe they don't make too much sense. Maybe they do. But we have this one here. If we look at this, the variance of the predicted values for our sample data uh, over the variance of the observed values in our sample data. So let's take a look at what that means in a plot. Here we have our example that we've looked at in a few different spots, but we have this activation level as our y variable. And our activation level varies from a low of about there to a high of about here. And if we so desired, we could even calculate the variance of those activation levels. But if we think about this a little, Part of the variance in y is due to the fact that there seems to be an increasing trend here. There seems to be an increasing trend of y with x. And we fit a line through those points. We could do something like that. So part of that variation in y is due to the increasing trend. And part is due to random variation about the line. Random variability about the line. Part due to the increasing trend, part due to random variation. The proportion that is due to that increasing trend is r squared. We sometimes express that as a percentage. Remember that our r was 0 0.60. r was 0 0.60. And our r squared was 0 0.36, often expressed as a percentage. And we might say something like this. Approximately 36% of the variability in activation level can be explained by the linear relationship with empathic concern scale score. Approximately 36% of the variation in y can be explained by the linear relationship with x. For a little perspective, let's look at a few of these. This first one over here, we have an r squared of 0.83. 83% of that variation is due to that increasing trend. Over here, we have the same type of idea, exactly the same values, only the decreasing relationship. So our r is negative now, so we've got a decreasing relationship. But still, 83% of the variation in y is due to that decreasing trend. And a couple of different ones over here on the right. We don't have much going on. We have an r and r squared very close to zero because there's pretty much a random scattering of points. Over here, we have a bit more variability, but there is an increasing trend here. So we get an r value of 0.57 and an r squared of 0.32. Now recall that r and r squared are useful measures in linear relationships, and we should not be using them in spots that look like this. On the left, we have a very strong relationship between x and y, a very strong relationship between x and y, but it is more of a curve. And we can fit curves through points and do more advanced things, but in simple linear regression, we are just looking for a basic line 
slope linear relationship. And so even though we have this very strong relationship between x and y, it is not a linear relationship. We get a correlation coefficient very close to zero and an r squared value of very close to zero. On the other side of things, we do here have an increasing trend in a sense. If we were to force a line through those points, we would get an R value of 0.76 and an R squared of 0.58. 58% of the variability in those points is due to this increasing trend. But it's still a lousy measure of the relationship. It is not a linear relationship. It is a curvilinear relationship, and we should deal with that in the right way. So R and R squared measure the strength of the linear relationship between x and y. Now if we so desired we can test the null hypothesis that the true correlation, the parameters value is equal to zero and we have a test statistic for that. It is just a basic t-test statistic but it is exactly identically equivalent mathematically to testing the null hypothesis that the true slope is equal to zero and that is the test that is often shown in the output. So there isn't typically a need to carry out this test again because very often, this has been done for us in computer output.